today I wanted to talk about something that's like different from uh, what I talked about last year, but still I'm you know, within the range of uh, things that I talk about um, often, which is just like some thoughts on the longer term future of uh, where Ethereum is uh, going as a protocol, right? So here, not just the uh, ecosystem, but like, you know, specifically the blockchain and kind of the core infrastructure around the blockchain, the consensus, um, and just uh, what do we expect that, to that side of things to look 10 years from now, and how can we start now to build toward something that actually would be the, an Ethereum protocol that we, will actually, that we would want to see in the long term. Um, so the Ethereum protocol right now is uh, in the middle of this long and uh, complicated transition. And it's a transition toward becoming a system which is uh, much more powerful and uh, robust in a lot of ways, right? So at the end of the last year, uh, I published uh, this uh, kind of updated roadmap document where I mean, we talked about these kind of big five categories of like stuff that's happening in Ethereum protocol lands, right? Where there's the merge, the surge, the verge, um, and then a bit lower is gonna be the purge and uh, the splurge, right? So the merge is a uh, proof of stake, the surge is uh, sharding, um, and uh, the verge is uh, vertical trees. The uh, purge is like things like uh, state expiry and like deleting old history. And uh, the splurge is uh, basically just all of the other fun stuff. With um, SSLE, you're not going to be able to tell who is going to create the next block until they actually release the block, which is uh, really amazing, right? Because that basically, it gives us really nice security property where like if you're an attacker and you want to stop blocks from being created, you don't know who you have to attack. Um, and then we want to do like other things uh, around uh, uh, just, Incre increasing the amount of uh, space that we have, some kind of like fast, uh, faster confirmation so that Ethereum could have uh, not, not just greater scalability, but also like lower latency, and at least until you get some degree of confirmation that your transaction got included. Uh, so just a lot of like interesting things, at the end of which Ethereum will be a far more scalable system. Ethereum today can process about uh, 15 to 20 uh, transactions a second. Uh, this Ethereum, including the rollups, including the sharding, um, if uh, at least according to the math, it's able to, going to be able to process 100,000 tra transactions a second. Um, um, and you know, hopefully, there's going to be a lot, a lot of other benefits that come at the same time, right? So there's this big long list of like really fun stuff that will make Ethereum into a much more powerful system, a much more robust system, a much more secure system, and even a more decentralized system. But it's a long and complicated transition. There's a lot of stuff that's happening. Like each one of these boxes uh, basically like, oh, ha has like some kind of team associated with it at, the, um, at this point. Uh, so you know, a lot of work that needs to be done, right? Um, so the difference between uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum is uh, that uh, Bitcoiners consider Bitcoin to be 80% complete, and Ether but Ethereans consider Ethereum to be 40% complete, right? You know, when you look at what Ethereum is trying to accomplish, I mean, you know, it's true, right? Like uh, the uh, Ethereum protocol is like really trying to, still trying to be, uh, f fulfill this role of being some kind of secure base layer, but trying to do so in such a way that like it actually has the functionality that it needs to be to be a secure uh, a secure base layer for the stuff that people actually want to do right and that does involve adding more features it does involve doing more work um i'd say it's 50 ethereum go, can go up to being 55 percent complete after the merge uh, so uh, we're getting close um you know we, i think uh, we're getting close to kind of the second half of um, this uh, kind of big long vision right which is uh, really amazing and like uh, you know um so Completing the transition involves deep changes, right? It involves deep changes, uh, so monetary policy, right? So the switch from proof of work to proof of stake is gonna decrease issuance from five million a year to this kind of weird math equation that's like 166 multiplied by the square root of the total deposits. So if there's a million ETH staking, it's 166,000. If there's 100 million ETH staking, it only goes up to 1.66 million. So in all cases, it decreases by a lot, right? It's not fixed anymore, but it's much lower than it used to be. Uh, so monetary policy is changing. Security model is uh, changing. So proof of stake is, it is much more secure than proof of work, but it does have its trade-offs. Data availability sampling. Uh, so this is the idea that you can literally have a blockchain run without needing even a single node to process the entire chain, which is something that like from a blockchain point of view is very fascinating and mind blowing, but from a kind of broader distributed systems point of view, it's like totally uh, uh, common sense, right? Like nobody would even consider building a version of BitTorrent where everyone has to download every movie, right? But that's how blockchains work today. People value scalability. And if we want scalability, um, and uh, if you want decentralization, so like the ability to run nodes easily, then you just can't require nodes to store this kind of constant ever growing amount of space. So there's a lot of stuff happening, but and um, this is where I get to kind of the more cautionary part of the talk. That doesn't mean that we should keep going this way forever. So this is, this is I think, both my preference and also my impression of uh, something that a lot of people want for the Ethereum protocol, which is basically for the des a desire that for Ethereum to kind of eventually settle down, 
right? So right now, I think uh, we're entering into this kind of period of rapid change where the capabilities of Ethereum are increasing rapidly, right? So, uh, you know, we got EIP-1559, we're going to get a switch to proof of stake, we're going to get vertical trees, we're going to get single secret leader election, um, and we're going to get EVM improvements and all of, the, and all of this really cool stuff. But at, at some point, the rate of change of uh, the ETF yeah, protocol is going to have to, again, slow down, right? And, uh, but it does mean that it does kind of look somewhat like more like a system that optimizes for safety and predictability and less like an ecosystem that optimizes for impressing and dazzling people. This philosophy that layer one is for security and dependability, layer two is for rapid iteration, action, high scalability, extremely fast response times, so like good features for users, and all of these different things, right? And that focuses a kind of... Uh, on, not on a kind of outmaneuvering every, uh, a kind of everyone else and not on kind of doing everything else as quickly as possible, but on surviving. And, um, you know, on surviving much, much longer than like things like, uh, things like Luna do, right? Um, and the layer two has been doing amazing and impressive stuff, right? Like there have been all of these ZK EVM announcements that we saw over the last couple of days. Um, there's uh, a lot of uh, work that's uh, being done, um, you know, by yeah, both the optimistic and the ZK teams. Like um, Optimism ad has um, added uh, compression. Um, Arbitrum has been I mean, quietly yeah, uh, pro progressing and just uh, you know becoming more stable and adding features. Um, you know, Starknet has uh, been recently made their uh, their uh, kind of announcements, um, and uh, we, we're starting to see more and more. Um, you know, what kind of a network Starknet is going to shape up into being? And there's just a lot of amazing work that was done on, on uh, Cairo there. Um, you know, zk sync um, is uh, going forward, and uh, you know, Polygon zk rollup. Uh, so you know, scroll this uh, kind of big, long uh, list of, uh, of uh, teams uh, that has been just doing all this amazing work. Things in particular that, like, I would be scared of doing, right? So things that I think we should not do. One is uh, adding support for multiple VMs. So simultaneously support EVM and EWASM and Cairo and other stuff. The reason why I don't want to do that is because that just multiplies consensus complexity. Like, um, getting comfortable with base layer snarks before we have much better circuit legibility, right? So before we really have the tools to kind of dig into uh, ZK snark circuits and like be able to properly understand like here's exactly what's going on at uh, you know each individual constraint. Um, also, I like I personally am scared of surrendering to this idea that like it's okay if no single person can understand the Ethereum protocol because we can specialize. Like, I think part of Ethereum being a trustless protocol should actually be Ethereum being a simple enough protocol that if you really wanted to wrap your head around the entire thing, you should be able to. So what are other like awesome things that you that I think that we should actually increase our focus on over time, right? Like basically how far can we go on like making the entire Ethereum ecosystem like actually meaningfully decentralized, meaningfully reduce dependencies on kind of, like single actors, meaningfully reduce privacy risks uh, that come from dependence on single actors, um, and just actually make the, uh, the Ethereum network kind of resilient in the way that I think um, a lot of people want it to be. So I do think that there are changes that are worth making in the long term, right? So like I personally am not predicting that the Ethereum network is going to act like ever be, like, become something that undergoes literally zero change. Um, and like there are, here's some examples that are, I think are actually worth it. Um, upgrades from quantum resistance. Quantum computers, there's a big chance that they're eventually going to come. And once quantum computers come, we have to upgrade to different cryptography. If ZK EVMs work well, increasing transaction space on the base layer. Uh, so if once you know we have good circuit legibility and we have uh, very good ZK uh, implementations that can snark verify the EVM, then that's something that could be applied in the base layer. You could start adding more transaction space. You can start using more data space to, or more of this data availability space to add transaction space. Um, if much better cryptography comes out that lets us massively improve efficiency and simplicity, we should use it, right? And like, we don't know what the needs of 2032 are going to demand. Um, so one example of this is like the whole MEV uh, situation, right? Like in, the, kind of, the centrality of MEV as this issue that the Ethereum protocol needs to like really build and work around, that's something that we weren't really aware of back in 2019, and we became aware of in 2021, and now it's like well understood and it's part of like how we think about the Ethereum protocol in 2022. We are in this kind of environment where it's just unavoidable that all of these rapid changes that are going to produce all of these really important things that Ethereum people have been looking forward to for a long time are going to have to be done, right? Like people have been looking forward to proof of stake for a long time. But in the longer term, th there is also this challenge of like shifting down the gears again and like actually yeah, also settling into this new, this newer normal of Ethereum actually being this kind of dependable system that it, at some point is only going to change very infrequently. You know, make sure that uh, your application continues to work and even works better um, in a world where the uh, Ethereum protocol is uh, kind of upgraded in a bunch of ways. Um, and uh, at the same time, um, you know, also the layer two team.
games, right? Like if uh, layer one is going to slow down its rate of change at some point, then like uh, to the extent that change is still required, the layer two protocols are going to have to pick up the mantle. And uh, you know, I think our layer two ecosystem is great and that's uh, going to keep uh, becoming even greater. So thank you. Thank you.